All right, so today we're going to continue on with our parallel lines, and now we're going to look at proving lines parallel. So to determine if we have parallel lines, we need to make true angle relationships. So some angle relationships we have already used, and we're just going to continue using them to help us prove lines parallel. So here we have a list right here. So the first four you can see on the page, the first one is corresponding angles converse. So what that tells me is if I have two angles that are congruent and we can tell that they are congruent because of the curve markings, then I can say that angle, oh, sorry, line J, so line J is parallel to line K by corresponding angle converse. Again, that's, that's pretty much it. We're just making sure we have true relationships. Again, we need to make sure that these two were congruent and they are because of the curve markings. So I could say that then J is um, parallel to K. All right, so then here we have alternate interior angles. Here you could see four and five are alternate interior, they are congruent. So then that means that I could say J is parallel to K by alternate interior angle converse. We use the word converse when we're proving. So in this case, all our answers when we're proving our lines parallel should have the term converse in it. The next one here we have angle one and angle eight. They are alternate exterior. So I could say that line J is parallel to K by alternate exterior angle converse. And then the last one on this page, you can see we have the two angles sandwiched in between the two parallel lines. Well, in this case, not parallel yet. We're going to prove that they are three and five. We can see that we have our two here. So we could say that angle three and angle five are same side interior or consecutive interior. And then we can say that J is parallel to K by SSI converse. Again, do not forget that word converse. All right, so we have four options to prove our lines parallel. So we're gonna keep adding to that list. We have one more. So you can see we have the transitive property of parallel lines. Now that's something we actually have talked about already. Um, we are saying that transitive is connecting. So if P is parallel to Q and Q is parallel to R, then I can conclude P and R are parallel. That's our transitive property. All right, so now we're gonna use our knowledge to help us figure out the problems below. So I'm gonna do some with you and then you're gonna to try to do some on your own. So here it says, decide whether there is enough information to prove M is parallel to N. Those are just our lines. Um, number three did get cut off, so here's M and N. So then you're gonna see if they are parallel and if so, we're gonna state our theorem. Our theorems are all the options that we had on our page. So we had a couple. Now it's very important to pay attention to the ones we did have because there's some we don't have. So we have corresponding angles. I'm actually gonna write them down here. So we have corresponding angles. We have alternate interior angle converse, alternate exterior angle converse, we have SSI converse. Now, that's not all our angle relationships, but these are the ones that can be used to prove lines parallel. What we cannot use, I'm gonna put this on the side too, can not 
use vertical or linear. Vertical angles and linear pairs do not help us prove our angles or our, our lines are parallel. So looking at number three, we're going to look at those two uh, angles that are marked off. And we decide if we see a relationship. So I can see that these angles are congruent and they are in the same position. So we call these corresponding. So that means that I know that these two angles are corresponding angles making M parallel to N by corresponding angle converse. So that would be my answer for number three. Number four, here I have congruent angles, and these are vertical angles. So I'm going to actually write that I have vertical angles. So when I have vertical angles, you can see I don't have any information down below here. It's not connecting the two lines. That is not enough information. Again, that wasn't one of our options to even use. So since it's vertical, not enough information to determine our lines. All right, so I'd like you to pause your screen and try number five and six. All right, so let's look at number five. Number five here we have, again, vertical angles. So I already know that my answer is not enough information. And then we have number six. Here we have two angles on the exterior, their alternate exterior, and that is one of our options. So I can say that M is parallel to N by alternate exterior angle converse. All right, so now we have a really good question down here seeing if our angles make M and N parallel. The angles that I have presented to me do not have a relationship right now. And as we learn, we can move our numbers around a little bit to make a relationship. So I want to be able to figure out this angle right here. Now, how am I going to figure out that angle right there? What I'm going to do is I can see that I can take my linear pair. Notice I'm not pulling anything up by using any of the terms because we don't know if they are indeed parallel. So linear pair and vertical is all I can use for this. So I'm going to say 180 minus 75 equals 105, making this angle right here 105. So now looking at 105 and 105, do they have a relationship that fits one of these converses? And the answer is yes, they are corresponding. So corresponding angle converse. That would prove that M is parallel to N. All right, we're gonna try a little more. All right, so here we're gonna incorporate our algebra skills to figure out our values. So the very first one we're looking at to see if we have enough information to prove what we need. So here it says, find the value of X that makes M parallel to N. So they're telling you they want it to work. So now I need to figure out the relationship. So here are the two angles presented. So that means they are corresponding. So I'm actually gonna write their corresponding. So we have to remember, is corresponding congruent or is it supplementary? And corresponding is congruent. So my equation would be 3x plus 5 equals 65. Now I'm going to get x by itself, so I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I have 3x equals 60, divide by 3, and x equals 20. And we're finished. All they wanted to know is what X would have to be to make this work for corresponding angle converse to be true. All right, so you can pause your screen. Now, the next one is going to be a combination of what we just did on this problem and the problem before. 
you're going to have to move things around just a little bit by using vertical angles or linear pair. All right, so let's go over this one. So I'm going to figure out what this amount is. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to subtract from my linear pair 180 minus 72. And that is 108. So now I know that 108 and 4 times the quantity of x plus 5 are corresponding angles if the lines were parallel. And they want it to be parallel, so we're going to make that happen. So remember, corresponding is congruent. So I'm going to say 108 is equal to 4 parentheses x plus 5. There are two ways to go about this problem. I'm going to go the way that I think most of you would solve it. So I'm going to distribute. And then we're going to subtract 20 from both sides. So I have 88 equals 4x divide by 4 and x equals 22. All right, so now we're going to take that information and apply it to a proof. All right, so here it says given angle 4 is congruent to angle 5. We want to prove that these two lines are congruent. Remember, to prove congruent, we can use corresponding angle converse. We can use alternate interior converse, alternate exterior converse, and SSI converse. Those are our only four options to end with. So I already wrote the first step of my given and I know that these two are congruent. So remember, we're going to have to make a connection, um, figuring out if we have corresponding angles. We can't say that these are alternate interior because we don't have parallel lines yet. So that doesn't work. So what can I do? Looking at my diagram, I know that I have a relationship between angle 1 and 4. So I'm going to say angle 1 is congruent to angle four. And why is that? Vertical angles are congruent. Looking at these two steps, I hope you can see we have angle four in common. So now I have angle one is congruent to angle five. What property allows me to connect them? That would be our transitive property. Now that we have angle 1 and 5 connected, do they fit the need of one of our terms? Are they corresponding, alternate, um, interior, exterior, or SSI? And in this case, they are corresponding, meaning they're the same value. And since they're the same value, I can now say that the two lines are parallel. So I can say G is parallel to H by corresponding angle converse. All right, at this time, um, if you are in honors, you can stay on to watch the last proof. Otherwise, you're finished with this one and we're gonna continue practice in class. All right, so now for honors. Here is another diagram and we're gonna do something called a flow proof. So our flow proof is written a little differently um, and we're just going to use it to look at. Um, so just follow along. So the very first thing is to how to write this. We're not gonna write a table. We're gonna start by writing our given in a rectangle. So here it says, it says P is parallel to Q. Again, that's given. So that's how we write our statement and are given in a flow. All right, then there's another piece of given. It says one is supplementary to angle two. Again, given. All right, so each of these rectangles gives information. Sometimes not right away, but sometimes um, later on. So the very first one I see that I can work with is this. Do we know what supplementary means? We know it means 180, so I can create an equation, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say the measure of angle 1 
plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180. The reason for that is definition of supplementary. All right, I'm kind of at a dead end for now on this side, so I'm going to look at line P and Q. So here is P and here is Q, and I can see that the transversal with some numbers that I haven't talked about are angle two and three. So I can say that angle two and three are congruent. So if you can see those pink lines are parallel, we have the markings, it's in the given, and why are they congruent? Alternate interior angles. All right, so now I'm looking at these two and what do we have in common? We have angle two in common in both of these. So what I'm going to do is substitute and I'm going to say measure of angle one plus measure of angle three equals 180. I'm substituting. So that's my reason, substitution. Okay, so let's look on that diagram. So going back up here, that means angle one and angle three equal 180. And you can see they're on that line. So they're on R and S, which we are trying to prove. So what is the relationship of those two angles of angle one and angle three from our terms from today? So we can say that the two lines R is parallel to S by, I'm going to actually write it on the side, the converse of SSI. We have that same side interior angle there. All right, so we are going to pause here and continue practice in class.